We are here today with Ron Schaefer. He is an Akashic reader and a psychic. Welcome, Ron. Hi, thanks for having me again. Thank you. We're here with Alina Kapulnik at Awakening Cosmic Reality Show. Um, today we're going to talk about some interesting things that are happening with Ron and what he's doing. Well, I mean, there's a lot of interesting things happening ever since the blood full moon, the X wave, um, all of that, a lot have been happening. Um, I mean, just for instance, I've really been called to step into a leadership role um, more than I ever have before. I'm really being called to step up and really teach people more about intuition, but not in the way that a lot of other people do. I'm teaching people how to access intuition through what I believe is one of the most, is the most powerful chakra we have, which is the heart, because that connects us to everything and everyone. So that's how I'm really starting to teach people um, how to access their intuition, but through the heart space and not just the heart chakra, but also the higher heart chakra. So really just kind of building and melding all these different things that I've learned um, from, you know, I idolize and love to death Sonia Choquette. So I'm taking some of her teachings, plus things that I'm getting through my meditations, and I'm melding them to create a new kind of intuitive instructional course. And that's just what I'm really being guided to do. That's wonderful. Um, and where do you teach the course through? What do you teach it? Um, it's all, it's through Skype as well as my, um, if you do sign up for the course, um, you'll get a ebook as well, um, which is a book that I have written and it's all based on the same things I'm talking about, um, in the course. It just kind of is in more detail because what people are going to get is they get a one hour Skype session with me um, every Saturday or Sunday and they get, you know, we spend an hour awakening their intuition the best way that they can um, because no one has the same intuitive properties as anyone else. We are all different expressions of source and since we are, we all have different intuitive different ways of intuiting the world. You know, for me, it is through clairvoyance and claircognizance. Um, but I'm a spiritual medium um, or I'm a spiritual intuitive, which means for me, I have access to all my clairs um, whenever. Now, do I always use every single clair? No. Like I said, my two strongest clairs are my clairvoyance, which means I clearly see, and my claircognizance, which means I just clearly know. And what I'm doing is I'm awakening people's hearts and in, wake, and in awakening their hearts, I'm awakening their true intuitive potential. Mm -hmm. So what would you say um, has been happening with the blood moon and the equinox and the wave X? Because when we started the call, you said a lot has been going on with you. Oh, yes. Um, so um, when the wave, <laughs> number one, when the blood moon hit, um, I was up five o'clock in the morning and I did not stop until, and I was doing intuitive things all day. I was reading, I was on Periscope, I was doing free readings on Periscope, I was doing free readings on Blab. I had such an excess of energy, I, I couldn't contain it in my physical body. I was shaking almost all day long and it wasn't until I would say about the peak of the blood full moon, which here in um, the eastern seaboard, it was 1045 that I finally stopped. And I, I was actually exhausted. And I literally just, I didn't get to see the whole um, blood moon because by 1035, 1037, I had to go in because I was falling asleep outside because the, the energies had finally waned for me. Um, so that, and then on top of that, I've also just been growing more in the way of the Akashics and how I access them and how I communicate um, to, you know, my own guides, my own angels um, within the Akashic realm. So that's been changing. Chakras have been changing. 
Um, I know a lot of people were like, oh, you know, I was actually part of a group and everyone was like, oh, we're, you know, if, if you're not this, you know, if you're not this vibration, then you're not going to ascend, blah, 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 blah. And, you know, number one, the portal's always open. You know, that's the one thing about the universe is the portal will be open and everyone will have their opportunities to ascend. And no one's really ascending right now or doing any kind of, I guess, uh, rapturing, if you want to put it that way, because it's not time. That first wave was exactly that. It was an introduction to the energy that you can start to feel familiar with as we ascend higher and higher. Now what's happening is our physical bodies are beginning to acclimate to that energy. You know, and that's where the chakra system is coming into play. And I was actually on with um, Deborah Bowen and Marianne Moore about oh, 25, 30 minutes ago. And that's exactly what we were talking about. Um, we've been getting overlays um, on top of our physical chakras of multidimensional chakras. And we're actually working with the magenta ray to bring those in right now because my crown chakra for the last, ever since the blood moon has just been uh, tingling. It'll just go on a tingling frenzy where it's just, I feel like there's something on my head and I'm like scratching and, you know, it's just, oh my gosh, you know, there's something up there. And then my third eye, the same thing has been happening. It'll just start twitching. So we noticed, um, Deborah noticed for herself, I believe it was her throat chakra. And I believe for Marianne Moore, um, it was the back of her skull, which is known as the ascension chakra. Um, that was really uh, starting to tingle. And we've also learned about that chakra, the ascension chakra. You know, we knew there was a chakra back there, but we didn't, we knew it was dormant. Well, now it's becoming active because of the X-wave energies. Exactly. I mean, there's 12 celestial cosmic chakras actually in the body, not just seven. And uh, they're all being activated as we come into these energies, I found, I mean, for me, it's been my throat and heart chakra. I've been having a heaviness on those two chakras because I'm, I'm trying to be more um, authentic in who I am and speak my truth, not just blending into society and what's expected. So I've been noticing that and my left leg has been tingling. So I do feel those energies. They're they're definitely coming in, and um, I have more ET contacts now than I've ever had before. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. And, you know, with that being said, um, with this ascension work or with this, and basically, you know, I don't really like to call it ascension work. What I like to call it is remembering who you are. Because really, that's the real journey here, is remembering who we are. And yes, you are going up within dimensions, and you are, yes, ascending. But what you're really doing is you're just going back to where you were. So I like to just think of ascension work as remembering who we really are at a deeper level. And when you said authentic, that, I mean, it's perfect, because that is actually a channeling. Um, I got this morning, I asked my higher self, I said, higher self, what do you want me to talk about today um, on Periscope? Because I am on Periscope and you can find me at Simply Intuitive. Um, and I do free, you know, I do channelings and readings and I'm actually doing the live webinar of how to awaken your intuition through the heart chakra on there right now as an introductory, you know, it's kind of getting people used to it. And it's been an amazing journey about how authentic you can be. You know, a lot of people love to hide behind different masks and they say, oh, no, 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 this is me. This is me. And, you know, they're not always as authentic as they believe themselves to be. There's always that aspect of it. It's kind of like, ooh, I don't know. You know, should I be talking about this? Is this taboo? So forth and so on. So the channeling today was to be as authentic as possible is to shine your light as bright as possible. Because that's what you're really doing. When you're being authentic to yourself, number one, your heart chakra is open. Number two is when you're being authentic, you're able to share your gifts with everyone. Not just, you know, one person or two. It's everyone you're able to share with. And, you know, even those who may be skeptical of your gifts, they start to believe because they see that you're being authentic. You're like, no, this is me. And, you know, I'm talking to you right now. This is me. 
This is my uh, as authentic personality. You know, I'm a very charismatic person. I'm a very talkative person. And this is stuff that I love to talk about. I love to talk about intuition, higher dimensional things. And I am so glad that you are being authentic as well by putting these shows on and, you know, being the moderator of them. I mean, you're putting yourself out there. Well, for me, um, my authentic self and my intuitive self said, you know, there's a lot of people who have things that need to be said. A lot of psychics, a lot of Akashic readers, friends of mine who um, would benefit from putting this stuff out for people to hear about and to listen. It, you know, some people might resonate, some might not, and that's okay. We're, mm -hmm. we're here to be our shining selves and to be ourselves and to talk about the stuff that um, matters right now that's going on on this planet. That's what right. it's about. And um, I will include anyone on my show that has something worthwhile to share. And um, I welcome many peoples of different walks of life. I do not discriminate. You know, it's it's important. I want my friends to be on my show. And for me, it was important to do this. I was guided to it, and that's why I'm here. Well, and I'm just so glad, you know, that you are doing, that we are getting the information out here, because it is important. It's important for people to start to recognize and start to wake up to who they really are at a deeper aspect because everyone is psychic and everyone actually is an Akashic reader because all the Akashics are are the collective subconscious of the universe is how I look at it. And so, you know, it doesn't matter if you're psychic, doesn't matter if you're a card reader, doesn't matter if you're a healer, everyone is tapping into that universal field of knowledge. So, you know, there might be some people listening right now being like, well, I'm not psychic. Honey, yes, you are. Everyone in this world is psychic. And with these X-wave energies, the new moon energies, um, the blood moon energies, the equinoxes, you're going to start waking up more and more. And that's why we're really putting this information out there is so that we can help others where we may not have had help. I mean, for me personally... You know, there was not a, lot, a whole lot of help. I live in a very red state, a uh, very Bible belt. Like, what I do is very taboo. But what I found is the more authentic I am, the more I'm sharing, the more open people actually are. I've actually built a nice little community um, of people that are spiritual and, you know, kind of believe along the same lines that I do. And I welcome all of you to try to do this same because in being authentic and being yourself and shining your light and sharing your gift your gift doesn't have to be a psychic you know it doesn't have to be an intuitive gift it can be as simple as sharing a smile giving great advice uh being a you know an ear to uh, someone in need it could be a shoulder to cry on you know you all have such incredible gifts and we so often put our gifts down because we're like oh you know, my gift isn't good enough. It's not like this gift. But the one thing I want to express is if your gift wasn't needed, then you would not be here. And that is the truth. Because there are plenty of things in non-creation that don't need to be here. You are in creation. That means that you matter. You have to be here for creation to work. So I just want everyone to realize that, that you have to be here because you are such an integral part of creation. Your true authentic self is so integral to creation and your gift, no matter what that gift is, is integral to creation. So get out there and be as authentic as possible. Don't let people tear you down and say, oh, well, that's not a gift. That's just common sense. You know what? I have a friend who does not have very good common sense. I love her to death. But she comes to me for common sense things. Why I go to her for book things. So, you know, it's an equal balance in that relationship. And, you know, that's what everyone needs to start finding is that balance. You know, find your tribe. Find your group. And once you do that, then you can really start 
to be your authentic self because you're going to feel comfortable. And the more you are authentic, the more you're going to not want to go back to that inauthentic self. You're going to start getting rid of different masks that you didn't even know that you were wearing. You're really going to start just tearing them off and being like, oh, that's not me. Oh, that's not me either. Nope, that's not me either. And you're going to start getting to the core of who you are. A very long time ago, when I first started entering the Akashics, I, I really didn't know who I was. I knew I was an intuitive. I knew that I had some sort of purpose, but I didn't know what it was. I just was like, well, I'm here for a reason. I just don't know the reason. And I went into the Akashics and I said, who am I? Who am I? And, you know, that was a question I asked myself in, you know, from a higher perspective. And what I heard back was very interesting. And I haven't shared this with anyone. So you all the, are the first to hear it is the Akashics told me that I am an ass, you know, as we all are, we are aspects of God. And my aspect that I embody is kindness and compassion. And I thought, that's it, kindness and compassion. That's what I am. I'm kindness and compassion. And, you know, I didn't understand that at all at that time. I didn't understand that what a powerful gift that actually is to be kind and compassionate towards others. Because compassion is the higher form of sympathy. You know, you can sympathize with someone, but to be compassionate towards them is even better. Exactly. I mean, um, if you see somebody in need, you help as best as you can. And you just make that person smile. And, and that makes their day and that makes your day as well. Because you did something out of the kindness of your heart for somebody else and not just yourself. And it's a good feeling to have. Oh, it is. It's a wonderful feeling. And not only does it help you and help them, but it starts to show people it's that like the six degrees of separation. You know, you do a good deed or, you know, passing along the good deed, paying it forward. Someone sees you do it, then, you know, they do it and it just keeps on going. And you basically build a wave of kindness, which then will come back to you tenfold. And a very, well, out of it, well about seven, eight years ago, um, actually, you know what, probably even longer than that, I think maybe 10 years ago. Uh, actually, it is 10 years ago because it's 2015. I graduated in 2005. Um, there was a girl. She was at the Coke machine. And, you know, for whatever reason, you know, that's when I was really starting to experience um, my empathetic ability, being able to tune into other people's emotions. Um, and I had just walked past her and I felt that she was so sad. And, you know, I didn't know why. I didn't ask why. I was too nervous. I was just like, oh. But I knew the girl. Um, I had been with her all the way through from kindergarten to high school. You know, so I knew who she was and we had talked. We weren't like super good friends, but, you know, we were acquaintances. Mm -hmm. And so what I did was I actually gave her my Coke. I said, you know what? I bought this for you. And she was like, oh, you did? And I was like, yeah, you know, go ahead, have it. Thanks so much. Well, about seven, well, I don't even know. I want to say about seven years after that. You know, I never saw the girl again, never thought about her. You know, it was done. I did my good deed. Well, she had walked into um, my mom's place of business. And she said, are you Ronnie Schaefer's mom? And, you know, my mom answered yes. And she goes, I just have to tell you something. She goes, and I have waited to tell him this for a long time. And mom's like, oh, no, you know what? <laughs> what happened? What's going on? And um, she said, when I gave her my Coke, she knew that someone cared because she was actually on the verge of committing suicide. She was on that ledge. She just didn't think anyone cared about her. She thought all the people around her were just superficial. And she said that one kind gesture, that one, here's, you know, I bought this for you and I gave her a hug. That gave her hope in humanity. And at that point in our, in, you know, our lives, um, we were having some financial issues and we didn't know how we were going to pay something. And, she, you know, the lady offered her, she goes, you know, I don't, there's nothing I can really do to repay that kindness. And, you know, she had actually overheard my mom talking to another coworker about our financial woes. She literally got her checkbook out, wrote my mom a check for the exact amount we needed. 
and said, she goes, this will never repay what he did for me, but here you go. So just know that that one simple act that you do can create a wave of kindness. And it may take seven years to get back to you, but it will always come back to you and tenfold. If you think about it, it came back to me a thousandfold. I gave her a Coke and a hug. She gave me $450. You know, the Coke cost a dollar. The hug was free. Wow. So, you know, just see that. See that being authentic and really showing people that you care about them can really be influential in your life. So the more authentic you are, the more you express who you really are the more the wave of kindness can come back to you. Exactly. And that just one act of small kindness could save a life. You, you might not know it on the surface, but it, it makes somebody's day. Mm-hmm. And exactly. it might not seem like it's huge, but it impacted somebody else in a big way that helped I them. Exactly. It did. And, you know, I would have never known that. There was no way I could have known it. All I sensed was a sadness. Didn't know where the sadness was coming from, just knew the person it was coming from. But at that point, I wasn't confident enough in my abilities to, you know, do a reading or do anything like that. I just said, I sense a sadness. And the only thing I had at that point was a dollar for a Coke, which I was going to drink because I was tired and I needed the caffeine at that point, um, and a hug. And so, you know what, I went to my most authentic self because in showing her that hug and showing her that kindness, we connected heart to heart just for that brief second. And for that brief second, I flooded her unintentionally with love. And, and it saved a life. It did. And it saved her life. And, you know, it got repaid to me a thousandfold. And, you know, there are so many instances where, you know, you may not know what people are thinking or where people are going, but when you're authentic and when you really are showing people you care about them, that's when it makes the biggest impact and the biggest difference. And that's what we're really moving into with all of these energies is we're moving into a higher space of love because that's what the magenta ray actually represents is love, joy, compassion. Um, it has both the aspects of white, you know, which is all light and also has the aspects of red, which is that, you know, very passionate energy. So, you know, we have the high, and it also has the aspects of the higher dimensions with purple. So, you know, that's what you can really start to look forward to with these new energies. And this is, of course, just my perspective on all of it. It doesn't mean that it has to be yours. But in my perspective, we are moving to higher spaces of love and understanding of one another. True. So true. I mean, I had a friend yesterday who I hadn't seen in a year or almost two years. And we just talked on the phone for four or five hours. And I was really being honest and truthful about who I am and how I've changed and um, we talked a lot of uh, about a lot of interesting psychological things, human behavior. And I came to the conclusion you don't have to be perfect in your relationships and your friendships. You just have to be you, your yeah. honest self. Sometimes the truth can be painful, but it's better to say the truth than take on a mask and, you know, not be yourself because people can misunderstand or misconstrue you. But when, when you're you, that doesn't really happen. You're just your genuine self. Exactly. And, you know, and that's such a great point. People can't misconstrue you when you're being authentic. And that's a common misconception a lot of people have is when they're being inauthentic, <clears throat> they think people like them more. But that's not true. What people are liking is a face that you're putting on. I mean, and I will go back to the only thing I can use right now is myself as an example, because I have done a lot of work with taking off, <clears throat> excuse me, my own masks. Um, when I was younger, I wore, I swear to you, at least a thousand masks a day. I would be one way at home. I'd be another way at school. I'd be another way with this group of friends, another way with this group of friends, another way with this teacher, one way with this teacher. Um, you know, and 
it got so tiring. By the time I was in high school, I, I could barely do anything. I, I didn't know who I was, where I was, what I was doing, and I was just very lost. And I didn't know, you know, who I was. And I actually started to sit with a group of, you know, ladies in the library. And, you know, we just kind of sit there, chit-chat, nothing much, nothing crazy. But that group of women was the thing that really propelled me forward. Because you know what? We were brutally honest. We were. We were just honest with each other. We were honest with who we were once we got comfortable. You know, I started peeling back the masks and I started seeing for myself, oh my gosh, I've pretended to be so many things. Who am I? Who am I really? You know, I, I knew the masks. I knew who they were. I knew the Ron that was the popular person. I knew the Ron that was the talkative person. I knew the Ron that was the chameleon. I knew the Ron that was the teacher's pet. I knew the Ron that was, you know, kind of sporty. I knew all them, but I didn't know who I really was. Who was the real Ron Schaefer? Who was he? What were his qualities? And I did start to see that the masks do hold qualities that are yours. Some of them. Some of them you just put on because you want to put on a front. You want to be like, oh, well, I'm this person, so another person will like you. But if you really think about it, if you just put on your real authentic self, they'll like you for who you are. Not for what you represent. Not for who you may represent. Not for any of that. They will like you because you are being true to you. And it's the hardest thing to do that because we are live in such a society that tells us that we have to conform and that we have to be a certain way. And it's so hard for us to really be authentic because we're told, be fake, be phony, fake it, fake it, fake it. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what? We're moving past that now. It's time to take off the mask and it's time to do some inner work. And you know what? Now is a great time to do it because um, Uranus is actually in retrograde, which is talking all about going within, going inside of yourself. And a lot of people actually are afraid to do that because they're afraid of what they'll find. But I want to tell everyone there is nothing, and I mean nothing inside of you, that you can't handle, that you can't heal, that you can't integrate. Because that's the other thing that's going on with these energies is we are coming to a place of integration of not only the masculine and the feminine, but of the different polarities of ourself. We're really coming in. We're really starting to integrate all of our pieces and parts and not only from the spiritual, but from the mental, from the emotional, you know, and we're becoming more and more whole. And as we become more and more whole, the more and more authentic we can be. And like I was saying, that's the energy that's coming in right now. Definitely. I mean, I'm listening to my intuitive self. Uh, as an example, I I was looking to buy a new webcam for to do this show through webcam eventually uh, to be seen on video. But I had purchased a webcam that seemed good it, it did what I thought it would, but it wouldn't record anything with any software. And I said to myself, what am I doing here? Is this me? Like, is this, is, is my software not working? But it was the hardware. It was the webcam itself. Initially, my intuition told me to buy something else. And it kept telling me, go back to the store, exchange this thing. You need something else. I'm like, Okay, I'm going to listen to that more often because my intuition is usually telling me something that is right. And I'm listening to my inner voice more. Mm -hmm. And that's really what we have to start moving towards is listening to that inner voice. And that's the, you know, where I believe that inner voice comes from is the heart. That's where we really hear good guidance, like the guidance that's dead on, the guidance telling us the right direction to go is that small, quiet voice. You know, we have a lot of voices in our heads. I mean, if you think about it, you know, we have the inner critic. 
And, you know, this is more at a psychological point of view, um, but this is where spirit is guiding me to go because I had no plan for today. I had no idea what we were going to talk about. I was planning on talking about just the blood full moon, the eclipses and all that. But apparently we've uh, been guided to go into this authenticity uh, and, you know, accessing that authenticity through intuition and taking off masks. So, um, you know, like I was saying, we have a lot of voices. We have the self-critic who just criticizes everything we do, every minor mistake. Like you may have, you know, instead of spelling Isabella, you spelled Isabel. And, you know, that inner critic is like, oh, why'd you make that mistake? Come on, what? You can't spell? When did you, you know, we learned how to spell way back when, ba 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 and so criticizes you. Then we have our angry voice, you know, that voice inside of that's like, oh, I'm angry at everything in the world. And then you have, of course, you know, your joyful voice. But the one voice you need to listen to is the one that is the quietest, the one that just says one word. And sometimes it's not even a word. Sometimes it's just a feeling. And that's what we really need to start listening to and getting back to is that intuitive side of ourselves. You know, within a balance, of course, there's always a balance, but we have to start listening to that intuition more and listening to that heart wisdom more. You know, we listen to the wisdom of our minds every day, but it's when we start listening to the wisdom of our hearts that we truly start to grow as spiritual beings, not only as a person, but as a spiritual being. As you open that heart, you become more than what you were before, you know, because you're opening up to greater capacity for love. And that's what we're all really made of is love and light. So as your heart opens, not only are you gaining greater access to your intuition, you're gaining greater access to the universe at large. Exactly. You, you, gain, you gain an inner knowing, knowing of your inner self, who you are at the core. And listening to those inner self messages is really important right now because our intuition can't lead us wrong. It just can't. It, it knows what we need and it tries to help us. Like even talking to yourself is not a bad thing because you are talking to your higher self. You're not just talking to your ego or to your outer self. You're going within and exploring who you are. So having that dialogue even out loud, people may think you're weird, but you're not. You're just talking to your higher core self who can help. That little voice inside you can often guide you in the most wonderful places and directions you could ever take in your life. Oh, yes. And, you know, once again, speaking from personal experience, I was to go on vacation with a family from the center that I work at. And, you know, I was real hesitant to do so because I didn't, you know, I've never actually done nannying. I had just babysat, you know, and I've been at their house for a year, every, you know, off and on um, for a year. So, you know, but then they asked me, they said, hey, you want to go on vacation with us? I was so hesitant. And I was like, I don't know, you know, and I started getting that fear. And fear is what blocks that little voice. And so a way to get out of that fear, I said, you know, spirit guides and angels, higher self. I asked for a sign in the physical world to let me know what is the best course of action for me. So, you know, and I said, I gave it a time limit. I said, you know, I would like the answer in three days because that's when they wanted their answer. You know, they're like, Mr. Ron, just let us know in three days. And I was like, huh. Okay. So, you know, I talked it over my mom. My mom was like, yeah, go, go, go. But then I talked it over with my dad and he's like, well, you know, they might be kind of mean and, you know, you can't just come home because, you know, you don't like what they're eating because I'm a picky eater. Um, so, you know, you have that. And then, you know, he was going over the finances. He's like, well, what happens with this? And, you know, how much are you getting? And, you know, I talked it over with coworkers. They're like, well, you know how crazy the mom can be sometimes. And I was like, man, you know, I'm getting so many different opinions. And I just, you know, that was really overriding my inner voice. And it wasn't until the third day when I just didn't, I didn't talk about it at all. I actually went to a park, walked around, meditated underneath a willow tree because I was like, I just need to quiet everything. And I, as I was leaving, all of a sudden this Jeep comes in front of me and it just kind of stops. And so, you know, I walk behind it and because it was going forward and it on the back, the license plate says, the fun V. 
And I was like, the fun V? I'm like, oh my gosh. I'm like, this is a sign. This is what I was asking for. The fun vacation. It will basically my guides, angels, higher self, intuition. We're all saying, yes, go on the trip. It's going to be fun. And you want to know what? I went on that trip and I actually had a fantastic time. I didn't, basically, I didn't have to babysit the kids until six o'clock at night and they went to bed at eight. I babysat them for two hours. I had the whole day to myself and then I had the whole night to myself and I got paid $500 for a week to basically sit at someone's house, eat whatever I wanted do whatever I wanted during the day, and then take care of two children that were so exhausted, all they wanted to do was eat and go to bed. Wow. So, I mean, it was such a blessing. And if I would not have listened to my guides and angels and my, my own inner voice, my own authenticity, then I would not have gone on that vacation and I would not have such an amazing experience, nor would I have had the opportunity to actually go swim in the ocean which is, I mean, one of the best healing things you can ever do is go into the ocean. Exactly. And I mean, those little signs that are guides, that are, that are angels um, send us can, are messages, literally, like your V for fun, V for a good vacation. They sent you a sign. Yeah, go on. Go, go on that vacation. You're going to have a fun, good time. And you're going to get something great out of it. They sent you a message. And if we paid more attention to those subtle messages, we we could make more um, easier decisions, I think. Oh, yes. A hundred percent. We can make so much easier decisions. And the decision making process would be as simple as closing your eyes for a minute and say, you know, and just asking, what does my intuition say? And you would get an answer. But the thing is is, you know, a lot of people have a very hard time doing that because of the mind chatter. The mind's voice itself is so loud. You know, to me, my mind was like, no, don't go, screaming at me. So I couldn't even hear my guidance until I quieted my mind, got out of the fear, all the fearful thoughts. Yes. And finally just got to a quiet space and said, okay, What's the right action step for me? And then I got my answer. And it was an amazing, amazing experience that I will never, ever forget in, in all my life. I'll never forget that experience because it was amazing. Yeah, let, letting go of that fear and those layers of doubts and what ifs and whatnots and like asking yourself, what is the true thing here that I'm going for? What is this? And, oh, oh, yes, it's this. Wonderful. And making a choice, it's it's like letting go of the chatter, like you said, freeing up your mind to just let it look at what's what's real, what's the true picture here, and seeing that. And believing in yourself. Right. And that is the biggest thing is belief that, number one, you are psychic, that you do have an intuition. I mean, a lot of people are like, I don't have intuition. And the thing is, just like I said in the beginning of the broadcast, everyone is psychic. Everyone is intuitive. Everyone has the gift because we're all connected to source because we all are source light. We are all that divine. We are divine made manifest in human form, you know, and there are also other things with made manifest within other forms, but we need to focus on that we are divine, that we are love, and that we have infinite access to the divine, to divine wisdom at any point during our life. You know, that's why angels come to us a lot of the times. It's always in the, our most dire hour of need that angels show up because that's when we're finally willing to release and that's when finally the angels, God, higher self can come in and give you the solution, give you what you need because you finally take, you surrender, which is a hard thing for any of us to do. It's a hard, I know it's hard for me to do, um, but we finally surrender and we finally allow that help to come in. We're just like, whatever, I can't do anything about it anymore. So, but done. 
Exactly. You release it and you allow your higher self, your angels, your guides to help you to just maybe correct the path a little bit, not alter it because they can't alter it. They can only help us to be at our highest best and to protect us. Sometimes they step in and protect us like a shield from harm. Cause oh, yes. They could see five steps ahead of us what's going to happen. And um, they will step in if it's not our time to go or if it's if this is not meant to happen to us, they will step in and protect. Oh, 100 percent. They will. And, you know, I love that, you know, this conversation is going in this direction because it leads me in to this point that when you are authentic, when you are listening to your inner guidance, that is when you get the greatest creativity and inspiration. And, you know, please do not worry. A lot of people love to worry. They're like, am I ascending? Am I doing my work? Like, is am I ascending at the right rate? Am I at the right chakra? Like, you know, people love to worry and fret about it. The one thing that you should understand and know is that we are all going to ascend at our own times, at our own paces, because we are all unique aspects of source and some of us may take a little bit longer and don't beat yourself up about it it's perfectly fine we are all on a journey to remembering who we are some of us fell and you know we just have a little bit bigger bump on our head than others you know and that's all there is to it so don't worry if you're ascending don't worry if you're do you know if you're at the right you know chakra what you need to worry about is how authentic am I being? Because the more authentic you are, the more and more divine wisdom, intuition, angelic communication, ETs, you will come in contact with because you're being authentic. You're being your divine true self. Exactly. And um, ascension is not about disappearing off of this earth and going off to a better and higher place. It's about living and exploring yourself and the world that you're in, you don't have to disappear off the planet or even go to new earth in the highest dimension, the fifth, the sixth. It's about doing the best that you can with what you can here and improving yourself and learning and exploring the awesomeness that this planet has to offer us. Mm -hmm, Exactly. And it's not only the awesomeness the planet has to offer us, it's the awesomeness that you have to offer. That's what we have to start looking to at as well. Like we're, you know, basically this whole conversation is about going into yourself, accessing your intuition, which is your most authentic self. That's going to give you the answer that's going to be most true for you. That's what intuition really is in a nutshell. It's going, and I will just repeat it again because that's what I'm being guided to do. Intuition is your most authentic self and it will give you the best advice on what to do that's going to be best for you in highest alignment for you it is your higher self soul godhead wisdom coming in you know it doesn't matter what you call it that's what intuition is and that's why it's so integral that we start listening and really listening because like Elena was saying intuition guides angels they operate on a subtle realm they operate very subtly it's the it's basically could be attributed to um, the touch of a butterfly's wing Mm -hmm. is how gentle they are because like Elena said they cannot interfere on your path you know they can guide you because that's what guides and angels do hence the name guide um they can redirect you but they cannot change your path so the more authentic you are the more you're going to get the guidance the more and you know i know a lot of people are probably thinking now well how can i be more authentic so elena if we have time would you mind if i do a meditation right now yes we have all the time in the world all right so um if you're listening I want everyone just to sit back, relax, and I want everyone to take a deep breath in through the nose, 
out through the mouth. Okay, we're gonna take another deep breath in through the nose. Out through the mouth. Okay, and on this last breath out, I want you to make the ha ah sound. Okay, so deep breath in through the nose. And let out the ha ah sound. Okay, and that's getting us into our heart space. And that's relaxing the mind, that's relaxing the body. So now what I want everyone to do is I just want you to breathe very gently, very quietly, just breathing. And with each inhale, I want you to see yourself shining. I want you to see yourself shining brighter and brighter with each inhale. And with each exhale, see that brightness expanding. So inhale, you're shining. Exhaling, you are pushing that shine out. You're expanding that light. Okay, I just want everyone to do this for just a minute or so. See yourself expanding, expanding more and more, encompassing all that is. And now I'm going to start counting down. And as I start counting down, I want you to see steps on a spiral staircase leading down. Okay, so we're going to start down from 15. So 15, 14, 13. And as you go down these steps, you're beginning to see them change color. They're getting to be from a very pale green to a very emeraldy green. And you're going deeper, 12, deeper, 10, deeper nine. Those steps are becoming a beautiful emerald color. Eight, seven, six. You actually start to see a pinpoint of light, and it's a beautiful emerald green color. Five, you're getting closer to it. Four, even closer. Three, it is as luminous as you are. Two, you're just about to step into your heart. One, here is your heart space. This is where you are the most authentic. I want everyone just to kind of sit in this space and absorb the beautiful energies of the heart. Because within the heart, we have four different chambers. We have the childlike heart. We have the courageous heart. We have the wise heart. We have the childlike heart. And I want everyone just to kind of be in those energies right now. And just breathe that authenticity in. And now what I would like everyone to do is I'd like you to walk around your heart. And I'd like you to see what you see. You know, a, you may see nothing. You may see trophies. You may see loved ones. This is your heart. You'll see what's inside of it. And now what I want you to do is I would like you to actually go deeper into your heart now. And so we're actually going to walk down seven more steps. And this is going to take us to our deepest heart yearning, our deepest part of ourselves that we may have hidden away. So we're now we're going to go down the seven steps. Seven. Six. Five. Four, three, two, and one. Here in this space is where you connect with your higher self, your intuition, your most authentic being. 
and to facilitate this, an angelic song is coming through. So please just sit back, relax, and allow the angels to assist you in having that deepest connection with yourself. in these energies. Bathe in your most authentic self now, connecting not only with your higher self, but with your guides, your angels, because all those are our higher aspects of you coming to help you along your journey of remembering. And now I just want everyone to thank your guides and angels, higher self. Tell them that they always, always have access. Tell yourself you always have access to them. And you can come back to this authentic space whenever you want. And I want you just to kind of wiggle your hands, wiggle your fingers, slowly but surely open your eyes and just kind of come back, come back to the physical, but still remaining within the heart. And there was just a quick little meditation for everybody. That's beautiful. And... Um, energetic healing a little bit goes a long way. It truly does. It's not just the traditional physical healing. It's also the energetic healing that helps us to release traumas, emotional blockages, even physical pains. When you work with the energetics, it clears stuff up. It dissolves things and allows beautiful, clean, vibrant energies to come in just that simple meditation doing that really helps exactly and that's what all of this really is is energetics because all we are are light and frequency and love so you know if you need to clear something up it's as easy as you know uh, if you need a tool to use use the violet flame it's great for transmuting negative energies uh if you need another tool Ask Archangel Michael to come help cut any cords. And yet even another tool that I personally use um, is I go outside and I actually have a quiet little space um, that I'm, that I have. It's in a forest area and, you know, there's houses all around, but you go back to this little forest area and the, all the houses are hidden. And you would think people would be back there all the time, but they're not. So what I do is I ask the spirits of earth to come cleanse and clear me at the deepest level possible. I ask the spirits of the lake or water to come and cleanse and clear me emotionally at the deepest level possible. I then ask the spirits of air to come and cleanse and clear me mentally at the deepest level possible. And then I ask the spirits of fire to come and cleanse and clear me at the 
spiritual, deepest level possible. And I just kind of walk around my little lake area. And that's what helps me to, you know, really cleanse and clear myself. If I've had like a bad day, if I've had, you know, way too many readings, that's what not only grounds me, gets other people's energy off of me. And that's what it does for me, at least. So, you know, I just gave, you now have three, two, four tools you can use at any time to cleanse and clear yourself energetically. Also, hugging a tree is great. Yes, I agree with you. I've hugged quite a bit of trees and the vibrant energy that comes off of you, off of them to you, heals anything that's going on with you and allows you to release stuff and you also give back to the earth you give her energy as well that way to heal her and to help her yes yes exactly and you know and she transmutes that old negative energy for you as well and turns it into you know plants and trees energy for herself to begin to grow as well so don't think that you're burdening earth because you're not she's using your energy to transmute and make energy for herself to allow her to grow as well exactly and if there's no lake or no forest if you're at work and you're having a tough time just go somewhere outside where there's air to breathe and just breathe in and out close your eyes and take a few minutes just to to be in your inner self and to clear the stress, just breathing and stretching a little bit as well, walking around somewhere, whatever outside space you have, you can use that to, to do that. Even your car. I mean, it's something that I love to do when I'm getting like super stressed. I mean, I work with children, so there are days when they just, they get on my nerves and they are just Mr. Ron, Mr. Ron, Mr. Ron, Mr. Ron. And every time I turn around, someone's trying to bite someone else. So I have my stressful days. Don't think that I don't because I do. Um, but what I like to do when that happens is I like to go out to my car on my lunch break. I sit down. You know, of course, I do. I'm like, oh, okay. And then I take a deep breath and I smile. And that's all I do. Just deep breath and I smile. And then I start to think of the things that make me happy about wor where I work. You know, and even though they may get on my nerves, I love each and every one of those children. And I see their smiling faces and it just makes me smile even bigger. So, you know, start thinking of those happy things, those joyous moments that, you know, you may have. And it doesn't have to be at work. You can think about a joyous moment, you know, you had at your birthday party or um, that you had during the week. You know, when maybe you won a dollar on a scratch off. You know, that could be something that was joyous for you. So, you know, that's another great way to kind of shift the energy. Exactly. And hey, if something wasn't working for you, just think of the end solution when you found that aha moment. Oh, I there it is. You just think of that and that makes you smile. Exactly. Exactly. Well, I think that we have covered a whole awful lot from Ascension to intuition, to ways to, you know, basically everyone got a little mini energy healing and clearing as well as uh, to kind of get in touch with themselves at a deeper level. And I think we have done a wonderful job and I am so grateful and thankful that I was able to be on today at this time. Mm -hmm. And um, I also just want to give everyone, you know, a little information of where you can find me, and then um, I have to get going. Okay. Um, so you can either find me at Periscope or on Periscope at Simply Intuitive, all one word. You can find me on Facebook at www.facebook.com backslash Simply Intuitive. You can find me on Twitter at Simply Intuitive. And yeah, those are about the, those are the places that. Oh, I also have a YouTube channel. And this is, I didn't know how to make a YouTube channel at this time, um, but it's literally just my name. It's Ronald, R-O-N-A-L-D, and then space Schaefer, S-C-H-A-E-F-E-R. And so you can find me at those places. Um, just briefly about the 
Blood Moon, the Equinox, you wanted to mention something about those? I know you said you wanted oh, yeah. to talk about those a little bit. Uh, and basically, all those were were portals that were opening to get us to a deeper level of understanding that we truly are multidimensional beings and that those portals that opened are always open. And everyone, like I said, will ascend at their own time. Um, and don't think just because, you know, you didn't feel the energies or you weren't, you know, reveling in them like I was, you know, just going crazy, doing readings everywhere and getting a deeper understanding of things, um, that it didn't work for you. It just may take time. And that's what, you know, a lot of people don't like about these, you know, events. They're like, oh, it's taking too much time. Well, the one thing is time is an illusion. It's a social agreement that we all made. Um, and if, if you haven't noticed, time is actually speeding up after these equinoxes and after the blood moons and, you know, as we accelerate into the photon belt, time itself is accelerating because we are accelerating as well. And that's what these portals really were. The blood moon um, was just a portal for that. The equinox, a portal for a uh, higher dimensional consciousness. And that's what, exactly what the wave X was as well. And it came in multiple different levels. It didn't just come, okay, bam, here's a wave, we're done. It came in multiple levels of consciousness and multiple different dimensions. So different dimensional aspects of yourself could also start the ascendiary work. Because as you ascend, as do your guides, angels, higher self, intergalactic beings, ETs, because they are nothing more than aspects of you. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're making contact with our higher selves. Just because you're talking to yourself out loud and somebody says, hey, that's weird. I'm like, nope, nope, it's not weird. I'm just having a conversation here. All is good. Mm -hmm, exactly. And, you know, people think it's crazy, but actually that's where I get some, a majority of my channelings from is questioning things and questioning my higher self. You know, it may just seem like I'm asking myself a question, but I'm actually asking my higher self. I'm like, okay, I don't know what to do here. You know, how can you help me or how can we, you know, work this out? And, you know, my higher self will then talk back to me. Of course, it's using my own voice, but I'm still, you know, getting the answer that I need. Exactly. And those waves, that wave X, um, it, it's heightening your intuition. Your, it's giving you access to your higher self, basically. That's, that's what this energy does for people. So it, it's great. It is. It's wonderful. And... It's just going to be an interesting journey as we continue on and as more people awaken to their most authentic selves and when people start waking up more to their intuition. Yes, yes. And I mean, there's all these rituals you could do for the blood moon, for the equinox, you can um, do Wicca, you can do just spirituality, singing, meditating, even just going around drumming in different places on the earth, in the parks and beside the lake, the ocean, to just um, keep the good energies going. I mean, there's, or you could just sit and relax and do nothing, and that's good too. Yep, it's whatever you are called to do. You know, you don't have to do something just because you hear other people talking about it. If it resonates with you and you're like, oh, that sounds super fun and I would like to try that go ahead and try it. I mean, for me, I was not a candle magic person. I really wasn't. I had never even heard of candle magic. But after I started working with Deborah Bowen of Intuitive Deborah, um, I really got into candles. And I love doing this, can you know, candle magic ceremonies. And, you know, now I've learned to put different herbs in there, you know, like cayenne pepper or chili peppers to help, you know, the candle burn faster. Um, rosemary, onions to help heal. Uh, onions is a great one to heal because it heals on multiple different levels. Um, I mean, there's so many different things that you can find, but you know, just do what feels right for you. Exactly. I, I do the candle magic too when I feel like I need to manifest something, but it's not going quite right, like on the physical reality. So I, I, I go with the magic to the etherics and I just, you know, I figure out what's really at the core of this picture and I bring it from the etherics to the physical 
manifestation of the physical reality, which is an illusion as well. Nothing is just physical. It's always fluidic and time is flowing more fluidly. It's not standing anymore and it's not at a pause. You can't pause the button, stand at a standstill anymore. It's, it's really flowing now. I've noticed the energies have shifted and changed. Everything is more lighter and freer. Exactly. Um, and that's just really where we're headed. That's where all these energies are really keeping us. And I just want to thank you again for having me on. And I will definitely chat with you later on. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ron. It, it's It's been illuminating and we've covered, we've shined and covered so much great topics it's amazing what you could cover in an hour. And we even talked about the blood moon and all of that stuff. And it's amazing. See like time. you Right. You, you so can, just. You can put it into a lot of time, into a short amount of time, a lot of good things. Thank you, Ron. Exactly. Thank you so much. And I will talk to you later. Yes. Have a good day. Bye. You too. Bye.